Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is Monday, December 16th, which means it's day three of... For as long as I can remember, I've been playing baseball. My first memories of being on the field was as a member of the Southern Little League Cole Sounds, named after the Nashville Sounds. I must have been pretty good from the get-go because I made the All-Star team my first season. My father coached me from when I was four until high school. He instilled in me the values of the game, the right way to do things, the reasons for making certain moves at certain times, and never showed favoritism on the field. Although I was a son, I didn't get any preferential treatment. I remember once when I was about 12, I had been toying with throwing a curveball. My dad knew that throwing a curve at that age could tear my arm up, so he told me not to throw them. He brought me in mid-game once, and during my warm-up pitches, I threw a few curveballs. He came out to the mound and told me that if I threw another one, he would pull me from the game. A few batters in, and I had a full count on the batter, and he kept fouling off my fastball. I decided to throw a curve anyway. Maybe dad won't notice, and I can strike this kid out. So I threw the curve, got the strikeout, and I hear my dad yell, Time Blue! He called timeout, mentioned, er, motioned for a right fielder to come in and pitch, and sat me on the bench. Although he was strict on the field, he also loved the game and is the reason I love the game today. In the summer of 1981, he took me to my first professional baseball game. Now, albeit only AAA, it was still a big deal to me, and I didn't know the difference yet anyway. I remember the smell in the air, the bright green grass, the outfielders throwing back and forth what seemed to be a mile apart from each other. The summer of 81 was significant for another reason in Nashville baseball history. Now, I don't remember seeing him, but I was there multiple games that season, and my dad ensured me that, in fact, I did get to see Donnie Baseball live and in person. Don Mattingly played one season for the Nashville Sounds before tearing up the bigs. He, batted, he had a batting average of 316 with nine home runs and 98 RBIs in 141 games that year. Now, while I don't remember seeing him play, there are quite a few stars that came through Nashville on their way to the show that I do remember seeing, such as Willie McGee, and Chris Sabo, Ryan Braun, Prince Fielder, Ben Zobrist, and a slurry of other players. Now, most of you know those names, and some of them are really big-time names, but the biggest name in sports that I was able to watch play baseball in Nashville was in the summer of 1994. I was a sophomore in high school and was working my second season as a parking attendant at Greer Stadium. I loved it there. The game started at 7 o'clock. We had to be there at 6 and work until 8.30, at which time we could go in and watch the rest of the games. Now, I bet during my three years working for the Sounds, I watched more than half of 200 AAA and AA games. In 1994, Nashville was in a very unique position. Greer Stadium was home to the AAA Nashville Sounds, as well as the AA National Express. There were games on average of five days a week. And for a high school kid working part-time, I made pretty good money that summer. While the Sounds game were a little more professional and usually had better skilled players, the National Express were also very entertaining. At 8.30 each night, I would rush to my car, change my shirt, and head up to the restaurant under the skyboxes and get a front glass table and order a Polish sausage with french fries and a drink for less than $5. And that's without my employee discount. I would watch the rest of the game there and get to hear the in-game play-by-play over the speakers. During one three-day weekend in the summer of 94, the National Express were at home and playing host to the AA Birmingham Barons, who had just acquired, on top of a new $330,000 team bus, the three-time NBA champ Michael Jordan. The buzz around Nashville was awesome. Be like Mike himself would be gracing Greer Stadium with his baseball skills, or lack thereof. It was the Saturday game of that weekend that started at 7 p.m., but this time we had to be there at 4.30 to make sure all the cones were ready, because we were opening the gates early due to the anticipated large crowd. I arrived about 4 that day just to try to catch a peek at the early, or at the nearly half a million dollar bus that Jordan had purchased for the team so there would be ample leg room. I got to the tunnel where the visiting team's bus was to arrive just in time to see this oddly beautiful pink, teal, and black striped bus pull into view. 
I didn't have direct access to the players, but they would walk past me about three feet away with only a chain link fence between us. I had already been instructed to never ask for autographs from any players, so I knew that was out of the question. But as players, uh, players got off one by one off the bus, I finally got to see him. He looked like a skyscraper. I was a sophomore in high school and hadn't hit my growth spurt yet, so I was only about five foot six. He was six six, a good six inches taller than the majority of the barons. He had a pair of oversized headphones on that looked like a precursor to modern day beats. On one ear on, one ear off, a skewed slightly to be able to hear. As he approached, I got excited, and when he got about five feet away, I said, Hey, Mike. And he looked my way and said, Hey, kid and continued walking toward the visitors' lockers. Now, did I sit down and have dinner with Michael Jordan? No. Did we hang out on the golf course? No. But did I meet Michael Jordan? Yes, I did. And that's the story of the day that I met the one and only Michael Jordan. And he went over to put up subpar numbers and eventually back to the NBA where he won three more championships. I continued parking cars and playing high school and college ball where I'm pretty sure my batting average was higher than his. Well, thanks guys for hanging out today and remember to subscribe, like, and comment on this video and we'll catch you next time.